The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the largest of all shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of flour until it was all leavened. He continued, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sell all, sells all that he has so that he can buy the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. And on finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore. They sat down and put the good into baskets and threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus said, have you understood all this? And they answered, yes. And Jesus said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. And when Jesus had finished these parables, he left that place. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So this week I learned something new. I I learned what this parable of the leavening means. Um, I, we were having our, our Monday morning 715 call and, uh, I was, I was asking, you know, does anyone understand this? Because I don't bake. Now I like to grill. I like to cook, but baking requires you to fo- to follow a really specific recipe. And if you vary too much from the recipe, if you don't know what you're doing, you could really ruin baking, which it should tell you something about my personality that baking is not what I'm good at, right? And so uh, Loni, who was there in the morning, said, well, you know, I actually do understand this, and I like it a lot. And she said that, what, that the method that they were probably using was something called a doodash. And so if I'm mispronouncing it, no, it's because Loni mispronounced it. And the doodash is a little lump of leavened flour or leavened dough that you store in flour, and, and the thing that the doodash does is as it goes through its biological processes of eating and excreting and eating and excreting, the things that it emits begin to leaven the rest of the flour. And so if it's a sourdough starter that they have, then all the flour that's around it that it's stored in over time becomes a little bit like sourdough. And so then you break off just a little piece of it. And you mix it in with this flour that it's been stored in, and you have like a lighter, different sourdough bread. It's a really, really fascinating image when you think about it, especially in light of the last couple of weeks. Because we've, we've been dealing with parables in the last few weeks where things end like they begin. You know, if you, if you scatter seed on rocky soil and then it it grows and dies in the sun. You can't pick the seed back up and try again. That plant is dead. You know, it's if if you have a dead plant, it's not going to produce live fruit or any fruit. You know, last week was the parable of the wheat and the weeds or the wheat and the tares depending on, you know, what translation you're used to. And you know, a a weed isn't going to put out wheat. You're you're not going to get an apple from a pear tree. And so the last couple of weeks, we have these parables that talk about the unchanging nature of, of both the good and the evil. And, and I always find these parables somewhat challenging because I realize that through my life, I've been just about all of these people. You know, and, and like I said a couple of weeks ago, I've, I've been the path where, where it all gets trodden upon and nothing can grow. I've been the rocky soil. I've been the thorns surrounding the, the good seed. I've been the good soil. And, and so it's, it's hard for me to, to imagine a life that doesn't have this kind of dynamism, this kind of movement, this kind of ebb and flow between good and evil and right and wrong and righteous and unrighteous, all in the same life. 
sometimes all at the same time. And, and this parable, though, I like this parable because it's, it, it says something about what I think the nature of love is. And, and not just love, but the nature of relationship. You know, I've, I've often heard and I've, I've shared the idea that, um, you know, the holding a grudge is like drinking poison and hoping the other person's going to die. You know, it's something that we sow in our heart. It's something that we nurture, we nourish, we, we hold close. The, the verbs that have to do with having a grudge aren't just verbs of simple possession, but they're verbs of intimacy. We hold a grudge, we nurse a grudge, we carry a grudge. And doesn't that color the rest of our lives? Doesn't that flavor everything that we do when we hold hate close to our heart? In the same way, when what we hold and carry and nurse and nurture and nourish is love and forgiveness and hope and relationship. That flavors everything that we do too. And so I like this parable because it becomes something that's dynamic. We see how, you know, even the most basic flour that you store something in, and this shows you where I don't know anything about baking and I don't know anything about this do dashing. So I'm going to make wild assumptions and just trust me that at least logically this works out that it, you can take any kind of flour and by the presence of that starter, by the presence of that sourdough kernel, by the presence of that little bit of leavened dough that then is worked in and leavens the rest. So the love of God changes everything around it. And it gives me hope that since these parables take place alongside and at the same time as all these other parables we've been telling and sharing and listening to, that maybe the narrative that Jesus is giving is not one where all of a sudden, you know, like we, we have this experience of the God who sees the good and the evil and then, you know, lifts up some and condemns others. Perhaps. The, the, the progression of the narrative of these parables tells a greater story than the sum of its parts in which we see the, the early stages of faith and what happens as faith blooms. That the effect of the love of God is something that transforms everything around it. Not through anything that we do. The flower doesn't do it. Not by any choice we have. The flower doesn't choose it. Not, not by anything that the flower in and of itself can do. But because where there is this leaven, everything around it is transformed. Where the love of God is, everything around it is transformed. And this week, as, as I find myself still really kind of struggling with, uh, with my own frustration and, and my own willfulness and with, you know, all the different things that happen in life that just cause us to have issues, as we say in the South. You know, this is just one of those weeks where I'm having issues. I am having a time. And it, it's not due to any one thing. It's just, it's just due to the fact that I'm human. And sometimes human beings just have a time and I am having a time. And, and part of the time has been wrestling with this idea that, you know, there is so much within me that, that I don't have any control over. You know, there is that part of me that, that is hard and, and that is rocky and that is thorny. And even though I don't choose those parts, I do sometimes accomplish things that contribute to those parts. And it's been the last couple of weeks, the sense that, there is just so much that's beyond my control. And I find that so challenging because I don't have to control the world around me, but I sure do like to be able to feel like I'm in control of me. And, you know, sometimes you just have a little stretch of life that reminds you, no, nah, I don't even really control that. I think that's healthy too. And so to, to hear this parable of the flower that is transformed by the leaven that is within it. 
I'll take that. Because this week I need that. I need to hear the good news that the love of God is something that functions in spite of me sometimes. And I, 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 don't, I, I hear sometimes in, in sermons that go in this direction, kind of the cop-out that, you know, it doesn't matter what you do. But I think it does matter what we do. I, I think who we are makes a difference. I think our choices make a difference. And we may not be able to change the love of God, but the choices that we make and the way that we approach this love of God certainly change the character of how we experience it. You know, and part of what I've been struggling with here the last week or so is my attitude. I, I know when I get to the point that I need a vacation, my attitude is the first thing to go because all of a sudden I just have a terrible attitude. Everything feels like work. And I, and I get my stuff done, but it takes me twice as long. And, you know, I, I do the things that I need to do, but holy cow, it's a burden on the people around me. And, it, and, and I know it's not fair to them. But you know what happens when we get tired and frustrated and cranky and we need a break? Yeah, but don't they understand what it's doing to me? You see how that shifts? It shifts from concern and love for those around us to that selfish desire to be served by those people around us who have to pick up our slack. And that's part of our humanity too, isn't it? certainly part of mine. So what I carry this week in this parable, and there's, there are so many nuggets in, in both this parable and the gospel and the other parables with it. And holy cow, Romans eight this week, I just encourage you to read Romans eight, but I want to leave you with this, that there are moments that all we can do is Trust that the love of God works on us in spite of us sometimes. That in the moments of our selfishness, in the moments of our frustration, and in the moments of our exhaustion, there is a power that is not from us that is working on us. So that when we return to ourselves, we return to something that's recognizable because the love of God in us has not changed, but it certainly has changed us. Amen.